And Willie Anderson's likely going to spend his entire career in Bengal stripes. Big Willie today signed a five year $32 million contract extension through 2011. The three time pro bowler helped limit opponents to a team record low 21 sacks last season. Plus, he hasn't missed a game in a decade. Kickoff for tomorrow's preseason finale in Indies at 7 o'clock. You can only watch the game right here on Local 12. And with the offense combining for 92 points in the last two games, things are looking good for the Bengals, but that isn't necessarily a message to the rest of the league. I don't know if it's a statement because, what is it, the 10th we play? I mean, everybody's 0-0, nothing, nothing counts, nothing matters, so... I mean, it's a good thing that we score, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter when the season starts. Preseason finale may be considered meaningless to some due to the long list of big names MIA, including Sam Adams, Delta O'Neill, and Antonio Chapman for the Bengals, Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison, and Dwight Freeney for the Colts. In the first quarter tonight on the Bengals' first drive, Carson Palmer complete to Chad Johnson, but 85's hit and fumbles. Antoine Bethia recovers ensuing possession. Sean King starting in place of Manning rolls right and goes long. His pass picked off in the end zone by Tory James. Offense back to work. Palmer goes right back to Chad down the sidelines. Both feet down. CJ three catches for 59 yards and those worries about the running game. Forget about it. Rudy Johnson with the hole. A 26 yard pickup. He carries three times for 45 yards to cap off the seven play drive. It's Palmer here with the 14 yard strike to Chris Henry. 7 0 Bengals. Carson Dunn, 4 for 6, 73 yards. Quincy Wilson would add a one yard score, and the defense holds tight. Former Miami quarterback Josh Betts looking for a score, but Greg Brooks comes up with yet another Bengals pick. 20 to 3, the final. Good for a. Season. Welcome back. You know, it's a good problem to have too much talent, but that's a problem Bengals head coach Marvin Lewis has. Lewis had to whittle 22 players off his roster today. That to get down to the NFL mandatory 53. Six players on the injured list, including running back Chris Perry, who was put on the physically unable to perform list. Now that means the former first round pick will miss at least the first six weeks of the seasons. Now the Bengals Wave six veterans, including center Bell, Ben Wilkinson, tackle Pete Lockheed, UC grad, guard Tyle Pakovitz, also tight ends Ronnie Gent, Darnell Sanders, wide receiver PK Sam. Bengals just keeping two tight ends. Nine rookies also waived, including six round draft pick Reggie McNeil, also safety Dom Busing out of Miami. He was let go. Among the players waived today, all except Darnell Sanders, eligible for the eight player practice squad. Well, this season, NFL teams were allowed to have larger rosters for that final preseason game, which gave some players on the bubble one more chance to showcase their talents. One Bengal who took full advantage of the opportunity was Quincy Wilson, who used last night's game and some solid special teams play to make the squad. In a crowded Bengals backfield, Quincy Wilson used Friday's final preseason game to make his case for sticking around. 128 yards on 19 carries, including a 49-yard run, all helped convince Coach Lewis, but that wasn't the only factor. Quincy's had a, a, a strong preseason, and um, he's really, uh, I think, been one of the guys who's really, uh, to answer Betsy's question, done uh, uh, done better on special teams. He's really, uh, I think, being around here for what he has, he's, he's, he knows the uh, value uh, that has and has helped himself that way as well, that uh, if indeed he's a guy that I would suit up on Sunday, uh, that he could uh, uh, you know, provide good snap, good quality snaps in, in the special team area as well as running back. Some cuts that may have surprised include wideout Reggie McNeil and center Ben Wilkerson, among others. A coach Lewis admits cutting 22 players from the active roster wasn't easy. We had some very, 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 very close calls. And uh, um, I know that's not easy for those guys to hear, uh, but, uh, but it is part of this. And uh, hopefully some of them will get signed back to our practice squad tomorrow. And, uh, and that'll be good. And they can continue their NFL career here in Cincinnati. And uh, because these guys have fought their tails off and worked very, very hard for us. That process starts Sunday when the Bengals can re-sign some of the cut players and some from other teams to that eight-player practice squad, with players that Coach Lewis feels comfortable with. There is a comfort, but I think it's a comfort both ways, you know. 
guys know what to expect, and they know when it gets too hot, they got to get out of here because it's going to get hot, and uh, they got to do things the right way. Looking ahead, I mean. So, next game is for real. Sunday, the Bengals travel to Kansas City for their opener against the Chiefs. Last year in the regular season finale, the Chiefs crushed the Bengals 37 to 3, running back Larry Johnson. 201 yards, three touchdowns against the Bengals defense. Well, we'll see if Big Sam Adams can slow LJ down a bit this time around. Sports director Brian Giesenschlag will be in Kansas City. We'll have a full report next Sunday night on Sports Wrap. Dennison, thanks very much. Uh, former Bengal John Jackson, Richard Skinner, 1530 Homer, the Sports Animal, join us now. Let's start off with what we've got as our poll question tonight. Does 4 0 mean anything? It is the first time the Bengals have ever had an untied, unbeaten preseason in the history of the franchise. Do you care? Yeah, give them the Lombardi Trophy now, right? <laughs> yeah, give them now. You know, who cares? Um, the Bengals care. That's who cares. Marvin Lewis really stressed that they wanted to go un undefeated, and they went undefeated. So let's now let's erase the whole thing and we we'll start out square one. I don't know if 4-0 means anything, but I think the way they played meant something because I think they played pretty well. I mean, even when you go to twos and threes, because at some stage you're going to need your twos and threes to play well for you. You know, it would be one thing if you're 4-0 eking out wins by rallying in the fourth quarter against third stringers. But they pretty much, throughout the preseason, played pretty solid football in all three phases. John, I said this after week two. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a different feeling inside this locker room that these guys may understand that it, it doesn't count, but they don't want to lose either. There is a different mentality in this locker room. I think we've gotten that feeling through four preseason games, don't you? Well, there's a different swagger now. They've got more confidence. They go out and they do what they got to do. Um, the big thing, they're, they're playing as a team, and they're playing some great football. The ones are playing great, and the backers are playing great. So, Okay, we're down to 53. Uh, anything surprise you, Richard, in, in the cuts that came out? Uh, not really. I mean, you know, some of the guys that got cut, you say, how did he get cut? And then you look at the roster, and you say, well, he didn't fit because of numbers. You know, you look at the 53 guys, and almost every single, in fact, every single guy, I think you can sit and point to and say, there's a reason why that guy made the football team. Maybe the surprise a little bit, Ben Wilkerson, just because of the upside there for him. But the fact is, he only plays one position, and that's center. You got Guy Check can play center. Steinbach in a pinch can play center. The fact Guy Check can also play guard is probably a big tiebreaker there. He probably surprised me more than anyone not making the football team. Keep eight linebackers on this one, John. I don't know about the linebacker situation, but what surprised me was the tight end situation. They only kept two tight ends, so what it means to me, they're going, they're going to get another tight end. You think they have to have another tight? I mean, Reggie Kelly will play fullback. Uh, Tony Stewart will play fullback. And my guess is at this point they believe Quincy Wilson can play fullback. Yeah, but you want a, a true tight end. You know, you go in that H-back situation. In order to be successful in this league, you've got to run the ball. With two tight ends, if one goes down, you can't put those guys on the line. And that's the biggest part. What happens in a game if Jeremy gets hurt and you have to put Reggie Kelly at H-back and you want to go two tight ends? You don't have a second tight end unless you convert a linebacker. Now, and do say, remember Brad St. Louis is listed in the tight end category. Yeah, no, and he, <laughs> no, he snaps the ball and that's it. He won't do it. Yeah, say, he'll be bending over at tight end, wondering who he's supposed to snap to. So you both believe that they'll go out and get have a third to. tight end or or another fullback, and I just don't see the other fullback. I think they go third tight end. I okay, almost have to. Carson Palmer has he gotten enough snaps to make you feel comfortable in starting in Kansas City? Yes, he has. I mean, what about you? Oh, there's no question, and you know. I would have never believed if he only played this handful of series that he would have been ready. And I think that's the part that we're all going to look back in two or three years and realize just how unbelievable it is that he's come back like this. You know, this is a guy that we're talking about maybe October initially. In fact, I know some beat writer friends of mine, Brad, I'm sure you're, you're close to these guys. It, Jeff Hobson from Bengals.com told me about two weeks ago, he said, well, I'd rather doubt he starts against Kansas City. Now it's a no-brainer. Not only is he going to start, but I'd be stunned if he doesn't, isn't successful against Kansas City. And he's also he's really sharp. You, know, you look at his drops, he doesn't look like he was injured. And that's really surprising. I mean, the rehab went very successful, and he's doing everything he needs to do to make sure this team has a great chance of winning this year. Only drive they didn't score on in the preseason with him at the quarterback was when Chad Johnson fumbled the football. So that tells you how sharp he is. Okay, so you go in. We've talked about 4-0. We talk about Carson Palmer sharp. We talk about how deep this squad is. And then we talk about how difficult this schedule is. Does any of this translate to a team that should go deep into the playoffs, where, where this team stands right now? I mean, I, I think it should. I think the big thing they have to understand is they've got to start out fast. They can't afford to go 0 and 3. They've got to go 3 and 0. Because it's a big difference between starting from the bottom in this, this conference they're in, when you got Pittsburgh, um, you got Cleveland that's coming up, and Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah. Baltimore is one of 
is going to be one of those surprise teams this year because you don't know what they're going to come up with. Well, these experts seem to think that Baltimore is that good and should finish second in the league. Are, are you under the belief that uh, tough schedule or not in the NFL, what you've got on a roster dictates whether or not you're going to win? Absolutely. And, and the funny part is, granted, there's going to be different home and homes for some of these teams, but everybody in the division is playing the same teams that you're going to play. It depends on, you know, sometimes you might play Tampa at home, they might play Tampa on the road. So as tough as the Bengals schedule is, Pretty much everybody in your division is going to be that tough schedule-wise. And when you look around the AFC, there's just not one team other than the Bengals and the Colts right now. And I put the Colts in that category that I go, we well, don't want to play them. And that includes Kansas City. They've got holes. They've got a new coaching staff. They've got a new offensive coordinator. There's really not a team other than the Bengals and the Colts in the AFC that I, I'm, I'm really worried about. And that includes the defending Super Bowl champions. Plus nine in turnovers in preseason. Mm -hmm. It seems to dictate that there was no fluke last year in what this defense was doing. Can this defensive team be that good that if they do that all season long, how are you going to beat this offense? I mean, last year they led the league uh, with, with 24 in takeaways. They're a legitimate defense. They've got a legitimate defense. The biggest um, question mark on the Cincinnati Bengals was a running game. They went out and got Sam Adams. He fills the whole room up when he, when he shows up. They solved that problem. Now they've got to go out and play. The biggest thing right now, they have to stay healthy. Okay, I'll ask you, Kansas City, do they win or not? They win. I yeah. think they win, too. I, I really do. I mean, you're not going to stop this offense. And the bottom line is this defense is so much better, especially on first down. I think they go to Kansas City. They limit Larry Johnson to 100 yards or less, and they win the football game. Listen and if to they, you and if, two and if they guys. don't turn it over on the road, they turn it over two more times, the chances of a real slim them winning the game. You they two guys over, saying they, they go into the toughest stadium in the NFL and win in preseason. Herm will be upset after, after preseason, yes, will be. regular <laughs> yes, season, will whatever. Guys, thank you very much. Dennison, we'll send it back to you. Speaking of getting things going, the Bengals opened the Chiefs Saturday or Sunday rather right here on Local 12 and it should be much more compelling than last season's finale when KC ran all over a Cincinnati team that sat most of its starters to protect them for the postseason. <laughs> I mean, you definitely we definitely know what happened last time when we went up there. And, but, you know, this is a new season and this is a fresh start and everybody's going to be playing and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a good test. Appearing on the opening day roster will be running back Quincy Wilson, and these men should take note of that. Wilson was on the Bengals practice squad last year, but fought his way onto the team this season. Bengals naming their practice squad today. The not quite magnificent seven includes John Beesing, Wani Gent, Eric Henderson, Glenn Holt, Nate Livings, Nafa Hutahi, and Ben Wilkerson. Marvin Lewis could have added an eighth player, but left that spot open.